Okay, so w the, w the whole point of what we've done here is that now we should hopefully have a way on the top right corner here to jump between the different accounts. Again, here you can see all of these accounts from all of these other businesses that I help manage. For yourself, you most likely simply only have one page and one personal. That's all you probably need. You click between the two to jump between the two. So it's very easy then to lose track. Well, which one am I running? It'll tell you there on the top right, Google Plus page or Google Plus profile. Question there? Do you guys have a question? you guys have a question? Okay. So Google Plus page here or Google Plus profile. Now, wherever you're at, then um, I think for most of you, I had told you once you've got your business page, then you need to click on Google Plus page. Then you probably got the pop-up about you want to use the new Google Plus. Yes, you want to use it. You want to click Let's Go and use the new version because they're going to shut down the old version eventually. And you might as well start using the new version um, from now. This, very generically, well, I have a very generic profile at your leisure, we won't do it right now, but at your leisure, you're going to go over to Edit Profile, just like we talked about for Twitter. You needed to create a, an account on Twitter and put your biography and your picture and all of that. You can do that later. It's the same sort of idea. What I want to do is show you the different screens of Google+. You see here on the left side you have a menu which you can close or hide with the little lines. Uh, if you click on the home, if you click on the home icon, you may or may not see anything. I see a few posts. This is again like Twitter. You can follow accounts, and accounts can follow you. So, Twitter has followers and following. Google Plus has followers and following. So you have the idea of followers and following. other accounts that subscribe to you to see your stuff, your posts, your content. And following is other accounts you subscribe to to see their content. I want followers. And as we talked last week, so I won't go into a lot of time this week, last week I talked about follow accounts because some will follow you back. Same thing here with Google+. We can follow some accounts, some will follow us back. We talked last time that we shouldn't just blindly follow, 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 follow because you might see, you might follow accounts of stuff that you don't really want to see. So you want to confirm, like in my case, uh, Nela Ray has something here and I simply don't want to click follow because what if that one thing they, t they posted right now is relevant but everything else is not. So you want to go look at their account then to decide to follow. We mentioned that last week. So the home screen will show you all of the posts that you make on Google Plus and all of the posts of those you are following. Let's jump down here to people because that's the screen where you see who are you following, who are your followers. What you see here is find people following followers. As you use Google+, you will get suggestions. As you post pictures and text and use it, it'll suggest, okay, you seem to be about baking. So let me show you some accounts about baking that you might be interested in following. I don't have any suggestions. I haven't used my account very well yet. Following. I'm not following any accounts yet. The thing that you can do with Google Plus is you can organize who you are following into circles. We'll say, organize your following 
you know, who you are following. Organize your following into groups, or I'm sorry, circles. So the terminology, organize your following, organize who you are following. The accounts that you've chosen to follow, you can also group them into circles. And by default here, I've got a customers circle, a VIPs circle, a team member circle, and the generic following circle. I can create new circles, of course. So the point of this, let's say I'm a pet shop. I'm a pet shop, I create a Google Plus account, and I want to sell this week. I have a sale on cat food. So I want to show my coupon of cat food to people that like cats to buy my cat food. If you've got a dog, you're not going to care about my cat food. So if I create circles, cat people, dog people, bird people, and organize those that I'm following into them, I can target my content directly to those that would, that would care most about it and follow through where I can get conversions. So you can see here, new circle, make a new circle, call it cat people, whatever. You don't have to do this, but I'm just showing here. You can create various circles. It's empty. Create another one called dog people, etc. And yes, you can um, place a person uh, into more than one circle. So we'll say organize who you follow into circles. They can be put into more than one circle. Yes? I have a question about followers and uh, people that follow me. Mm -hmm. um, actually, two questions. One is regarding Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, now, it just so happened that I got my new Twitter account. I got one follower who is a person in the same trade, and another follower who is a customer. Mm -hmm. Now, the person in the same trade can come to my uh, Twitter page and see who's following me, or who's following me, mm -hmm. and see that customer and place a call. Mm -hmm. So, how first uh, the first um, question is how would you deal with that situation? And the uh, second question is in Google, do these circles are these circles all visible to everybody? Can you hide them? Can you manage them? Let me uh, answer the second question first. In Google+, Plus, when you create circles and put people into them, they won't see that. The, they, they are private. The person won't know the circle they got put into. So that's one way for you to have that sort of, you know, uh, valuable information hidden. People won't see in Google+, Plus circles. Um, Twitter is much more open. There's very little that you can do. If your competitor follows you on Twitter to then see who are all your followers, who are you following, they can see it. Now, you can set your account to private on Twitter, and then no one will see anything about your account unless you approve it. But the problem with setting yourself to private is then you could be excluding a lot of potential customers. Another thing that you could do is you could block that account. You can get that competitor, go to their profile, and click block and then they won't be able to see anything about you. Well, they can log out of Twitter and go look at your account without being logged in because then they're logged out and they're not blocked anymore. They can create another account to spy on you. So Twitter is much more difficult to kind of keep that stuff secret, really only with privacy, and you don't want privacy because then you have less potential customers. Google Plus saw that issue and then doesn't make that public because Google Plus came out after Twitter. So I was going to say here then, uh, they don't know the circle they got put into. So if you make a circle called annoying people and you put them in there, they won't know they're annoying. <laughs> it's just internal. They'll get a notification that says Victor's Bakery or Victor's Pet Shop followed you. But that's it. It won't say Victor's Bakery put you into the annoying people circle. Can they only see the other people in the annoying circle? What's that? They can only see the other people in that circle then? No, no, they don't know they don't know they don't know that either. But they don't see anybody there. No, you're not really grouping them together so that they can interact. 
you're grouping them together so that you can deal with them and send content directly to them and organize them to market them more directly. Who can they see when they look at my profile? Let me confirm that right now. I don't believe you can see everyone. I can confirm that right now. If I go look at some other Google Plus account, <clears throat> what I will see on that other Google Plus account is I will see all of the posts that this account has made. I will see an about screen, whatever I have chosen to write there. Block mute report. I don't see the screen that says show me their circles. So they can't see the color. Right? No. Yes. Can they see the people that like the page? Um, no, it doesn't look like it. They might have changed this, and that's why I'm hesitating, because I've been using it for a while, and I remember seeing some of these things. But most recently, when they've changed this, I don't see this anymore. So this is what a Google, you guys can confirm. You guys can go right now to google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. That's, that's my company. Actually, try it, because I'm logged in. It might show it to me differently. But if you guys go to my company and poke around there, I don't think you'll be able to see who likes it and what the circles are. Prove me wrong, that's why I go to it. They might have changed it because in the old days they you could see that. So eventually you guys have the ability to do a vanity address like this. Google.com slash plus your address. But right now the default is just a bunch of gibberish. So has anyone gone to the profile to confirm what they can see on mine? Can you see my who I'm following? Or can you see who has liked my page? On on a personal account, right? Yeah. Okay. On a personal account. It looks like on the business account you can't see any of that, just on the personal one. Let's write that down. So if you see a personal profile. If you view a personal profile, you can see their connections. Right. If you see a, if you see a business page, you cannot see their connections. Another reason why then to get the person, uh, get the business one instead of the personal one. The personal one is default friends, connections, etc. But for business, well, business is business. I don't want you to steal my customers. So it looks like that's what Google Plus has currently set up. So on your screen here then, your people screen, this is where you can create See, now that I've started to kind of use it a little bit, it's starting to suggest. Uh, again, I wouldn't simply click follow. We said last month this is one tactic, click follow to accounts, some will follow you back. We'll talk about better uh, tactics, and the ones we talked about last time also work, as well as some new ones that I'll show. So, oops, this one switched me to my other account. So it's very easy to switch between accounts. But anyway... Uh, here we go. So, under uh, following, I can create different circles, put them in there so that I can market to them. If I have any 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 customers, I could click there and show them, and then unfollow. So I can easily follow. I can easily unfollow. They get a notification when I follow them. They don't get a notification when I unfollow them. Obviously, you don't want to abuse that, but. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we follow people. They get a notification that you exist. And all notifications will appear on this little bell at the top right corner. I don't have any notifications. As activity starts to happen, a number will appear there. I have one notification, two, three. It's going to tell me, did you get a like? Did you get a reply? Did you get a follow? Notifications. And then if, if I have any followers, they will be listed here. I don't have any just yet. what your profile actually looks to people. 
looks like two people is right there under profile and again at your leisure you're gonna go to your profile and edit it to put your custom logo your custom graphic your hours of operation all of that stuff we have collections there's that screen again to show your content to help you get found we will get into detail about this screen in a moment we have communities this is another way to help you reach more of an audience and I'll get to this one in a moment but I'm gonna say this one is my favorite way and I think it's even more powerful than collections I'll explain why in a moment but those are the general screens regarding Google Plus there's also settings where you can go there to um, you can go to settings to add more managers um, it's going to be in here somewhere under settings. They change this stuff all the time. But you will be able to add more managers to this page <coughs> to help you work with it. Let's do this. Let's go back to the home screen. You'll see then a little share box. This one says, what's new with you? Twitter said some other friendly greeting as well. And so if you click on that box, it pops open so that you can actually post something to Google+. And we have the ability to post text. There's no limit here compared to Twitter. I can write all of this and it's a great. Put in your life, your life autobiography, no problem. And it'll let you share a huge post. What will happen is, when you share it, there will only be a certain amount visible. It seems like about two, four, six, eight, nine lines. And then a person can click more and see the rest. But I don't recommend to type a whole lot on Google+, Plus, even though you don't really have a limit, just like Facebook. You don't quite have a limit on Facebook, but no one's going to want to really read a whole wall of text on Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter. If you look at the example content that's already there, oftentimes it's one, you know, headline to catch your attention and then a link. There's a little bit of text, maybe a picture and then a link. Little text, a link. Little text, a link. So when you're creating something, content here, you know, you're going to write perhaps a couple of lines what to write exactly. We talked last week saying I can't tell everyone what they need to write and what they need to share on their social media. But remember we talked about questions, we have multimedia, which includes pictures, albums. We can share, here we're not limited to four pictures. If we go to the little camera icon, we can upload 20 pictures if we want. It'll automatically create an album for us. People can then check out those pictures. We can share links. So let's copy and paste a link into Google Plus to get a preview. You'll get a preview. You'll get a preview of what your link is. You'll get a preview, just like we're seeing with these other people. So this is obviously probably a 500 word article, but it's then got a link and a preview. We can share a poll, just like uh, Twitter. I like this poll a little bit better because you can attach pictures to the poll. On Twitter, it's only got the text, and then you can vote. Here, you can do, I think, up to six uh, choices, and then in each one, that's uh, five choices, each one can have a different picture. Polls with pictures. You can share a location like Twitter if we add a location then we can uh, 
add a you know like a map where people can can go to your to your location if you've got a location. What to share? Questions, multimedia like pictures, links, polls. Um, none of these here says video, but you can share video as a link. So if you have the link to some sort of video, like off of YouTube or Vimeo or your own home page, you can just add it as a link right here, and it will embed a video to your post. But you cannot upload a video? No, it wants you to upload a picture, a photo upload. But if you've got... Um, a YouTube, you can upload it to YouTube and then just add the link. So the, the embed, does it play in the post? Yes. In the post itself, like this. You'll have a little thumbnail, they can click play and it'll it play right from the post. It's embedded. Now, you can do all of those in Twitter, on Facebook, on Pinterest to various degrees, with a little variation here and there on Google+. Um, very briefly, let's say I was going to get a link from my website. So my website, I have some sort of article here. If I copy that link, that address, and I share, going to create a little preview. Right there. It went to my site, it found a picture, it took the title of the article, it added my address and so forth, and this will be an active link. So simply copying and pasting any link, like from your website, and pasting it into Google Plus will create a nice little preview for it. If you have more than one picture on that link, you can cycle between them with that icon. If you don't want a picture, you can, you can click the little X. One of the most unique things that Google Plus has that the others don't is text formatting. Bold, italics, and strike through. The way it works is you have to mark your text. You don't see the result until you post it. So let me write it here then I'll show you. If you put asterisks, asterisks around your text, that will become bold. If you put underscores, that will become italicized. If you put dashes, it will become strike through. You can't do that, you can't do this very easily on the other networks. It's just text, plain text. But here in Google+, Plus, judiciously, I can make something bold on my post. I can make something stand out with underscore uh, with italics. I can use strike through, although that one's pretty uncommon. You can use strike through, but it's very uncommon. Uh, and if you have a real document in the real world, or if you're writing a paper or whatever in the real world, you use bold for emphasis. One or two things is bold to stand out because it's important. If you make everything bold, then nothing stands out, nothing matters. So you don't, I'm not telling you to put bold on your whole paragraph because then nothing of it matters and people will block it out. But if there's a couple of words or one sentence in your text as bold, that stands out. Let me show you how that looks. Again, you don't see the result until you actually click post, asterisk starts and ends. So I can have asterisks here will be. It doesn't have to be just one word. Post that. There we go. 
after you post. Those asterisks become bold. Underscores become aster uh, italicized. And strike through becomes that. Again, that one's not that useful. It crosses out your word. And because everyone's default text is plain, whenever you have perhaps a little standout text, it stands out. Tofu sweet potato, that's the first thing I read. Because it's, it's at the top, it's bold. Compared to the rest, our eye goes toward it. That's the point of the styling. There's nothing bold here. I didn't quite notice it. I notice this because it's bigger, but you get that when you share a link. I don't really see anything here unless I really pay attention. You know, browsing around here, that stands out. The Ro Ofayuchi Cloud Complex because it's bold, and then they put it down there too. So again, what you're going to share is going to depend on various things, what your company uh, profile is, what your marketing strategy is. Um, I'm showing you here the different things that you can share, but always think in terms like this. What will my users react to? Or I'm going to say, what will get me um, conversions? Remember, impressions, conversions. What can I share that will get me a like? Or in Google Plus, they call it the plus one. Do you see the little plus one there? When someone enjoys something, you know, a lot of people like that, that dish, 456 people. I'll give it one, too. I give it a plus one. So I'm the 457th person to like it. I want likes. Well, share good stuff. Then I've got comment. 42 people said something like, it looks good, or thank you so much, and so forth. That's the next level up, like we talked about in Twitter. When someone takes the time to write something, that's a little bit more meaningful. Because Lenny might be much more serious. That might be someone I want to follow, to follow me back. So the next level up of the interaction of the conversion is a comment. And then the next level up is that share. 29 people liked that post so much that they shared it to more of their friends and family. So starting off here, Terry might have had 100 followers, and one of these that shared it had 1,000 followers. Potentially, then, that's a reach of 1,100. My 100 and Kamari's 1,000. We talked about that on Twitter. What will get me conversions? What will get you a plus one, which is a like, a comment, a share, or what was the highest level of all? Anyone remember that one? Like, comment, share, one more? Starts with an F, ends with an all. Yeah, follow. So follow. The follow is the highest one because they like my stuff so much they want to see it as soon as I post something. So what will get me conversions? The content. That's why you also want to follow other accounts to get inspiration and such. What is this other bakery posting? And I said previously, it's valuable for you to follow competition, maybe not direct competition, maybe not the same company down the road or in the same city, but follow another bakery, another web designer in another state or another country and see what they're sharing and posting because you're not really going to be in competition that way, but you're going to see what they're posting, what's working for them, and then you put your spin on it. I'm not saying rip off their idea. Put your spin on it to try to get these conversions. And you never know what's going to be a hit. There's so many times that you have this great idea, you share it, and you say, this is going to be amazing, and you don't get much result. Then you share something else a little bit more off the cuff, and it gets great result. So you don't know what's gonna, what you're going to get until you try different things. And that's why I said last week, we have an account, we're trying to get followers, but don't try to get followers until you've posted something, 
what was our goal last week for Twitter? To do a few starting off tweets. Anyone remember that? Five, three to five tweets. So also with Google Plus, any social network, on any social network, try to post at least three to five items before trying to get, trying to build followers. Why would an account follow you if you have nothing to show for it? So, posting stuff to no one in particular. I don't have followers, but then that will help me get followers as we try to do these techniques that we said last time about followers, and then we'll talk about uh, collections and communities. Yes? I don't know if it's been asked What's the difference between following and join? It's pretty different. That's when we talk about communities in a moment, but it is a way to reach more of an audience, to reach more people. Following is basically you're following one person, and joining is you're joining a community. You're following multiple people at once. And we'll get into the nuances in a moment. So that's why I'm saying three to five or ten things. You don't know what's going to be a hit, so just browsing here, look at this. This, this curry recipe got way more activity than the Prime Minister of England resigning. You don't know what's going to happen. The Prime Minister resigning is tied with uh, this uh, traditional beverage, agua de pitaya con nopal, so a cactus beverage. But anyway, uh, okay, so let's say we're going to, you're going to have your goal of posting five things. You're going to post stuff here, pictures, text, polls, whatever. No one's following, no one's seeing it, but that's to build a foundation. So let's say you've posted some stuff. You also want to think about creating collections. Let's go browse the collections screen. On the left side, click collections. Feature. As you start to use Google Plus, it'll suggest to you. And everyone's going to see this. Eventually, as you start to create these collections, groups of content, your content could show up for people to further help you get more followers. A person can choose to follow your account or follow an individual group. Let me check right here. Carolina has a Streets in Black and White collection. Don't click Follow yet. I'm going to click the name. And I'm seeing all these great photos. It might have been her original photos or someone else's photos. Again, what you share is up to you, but they all seem to be her original photos. So Carolina is sharing these, and she's got 20,000 people following those photos. What's the purpose? She might be trying to get hired as a photographer. She might simply want to share her, her artistic vision, whatever your goal is. But she's got 20,000 following this collection. If I go look at her profile, if I click her profile icon, it'll tell me she's only got 1,400 followers following her main <coughs> profile, but she's got a huge amount of people following a specific niche, a specific topic. That's why you want to think about collections. You want to organize your content into a collection, we'll see how in a moment, because then you can get people that really like a certain topic to follow that topic, and in a sense they're following you. So create collections, which are posts about a topic. They can be pictures, they can be text, they can be video, they can be links about a topic. Create collections to entice people to follow the collection. Yes. No, 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 not your personal name. Business. Your business still. If you create a collection as a business, people will see your business name. Okay, so let, let's see how that works. If we're under collections screen, I'm not following any collections. If I chose to follow landscapes, I'm going to see all of these items. When there's a new item added to it, I'm going to see it on my home screen. And so once I've followed a collection, it shows up here. 
I no longer want to follow. Okay, unfollow. The fol clicking follow alerts Hans that I've followed their collection. I've made Hans aware that I exist. Then that then may result in that they follow me back. Best case scenario. Lower case lower level or lower level scenarios are that then they follow a collection of mine, they like a picture of mine, they reply to something of mine, but the ultimate goal is I get a follow. They don't get the notification if I unfollow. Right now I've told him three times that I followed him. You just click the same uh, the same button there. When you're under featured and you go to following, you can click click following to unfollow it. Yes. I opened uh, I went into one of the collections and it doesn't there's nobody following it. It just has posts, mm -hmm. but there's a little pin up at the top of one of the uh, posts. Is that like is that the Pinterest pin? No, they use the pin on Google Plus to keep that item always at the top. Okay, so that's like the admin stuff. Yeah, the admin will we'll see how to do that. Because when someone shares something, it uh, pushes down the older one. So the newer things push down the older things. If I want something to always be visible, I can pin it. It's different from Pinterest, but then I can pin it to the top so that it's always visible. Okay, so then on yours, let's look at the yours tab. This is create a collection. You can create as many of them as you want. The thing, of course, is create as many as you want, but you have to you have to use them. Don't don't let them lie fallow. Don't put seven, you know, don't put two things into it and then never come back to it. You want to put stuff into them on a regular basis because that's why a person followed. They want to see more of that. So if I create a collection and let's say I'm fictional company Victor's Pets. And so here I'm going to type uh, a funny animal. Any animal picks. That's the name. The name of the collection is searchable. Have you noticed that at the top of Google Plus there's search? Google is very good at search. So if you create collections with keyword titles of what people might search for, they might find your collection. You have a limit of the space here to some point. You can go that far. Then you have, is this collection visible to the public, to a specific circle, only to myself, you know, custom circle. If I want only the cat people to see this circle, I would go there to custom and select it. I don't recommend that you target your your circles, keep it as public as possible to have the most people find it and, and follow it. Targeting is valuable, we'll see later, but for the collection, keep it public. And notice, once set, this can't be changed. Once set, this cannot be changed. Tagline where I can write more keywords, 80 characters. All the best and most funniest pictures of funny animals. Get your LOLs here. Keywords. People might be searching for funniest pictures, funny animals, LOLs. So thinking in terms of keywords. If I click Create, I can do a little bit more branding. I can select a picture. I've got some built-in pictures. I can upload my own picture. A little bit of color design to it. And there's this option on or off. I would leave it on. What this is saying is that uh, if someone follows uh, your, your account, they will also follow your collections. This is just going to let your content be found by more people. If you turn it off, what will happen is you have a person has to um, 
specifically choose to go look at your collections and follow a collection. If they click follow on your main account, they've automatically followed this collection as well. Question. Mm -hmm. You make collections of, say, your own products or merchandise, but then do you add collections of other people's similar merchandise or, or what? Yes, to the collection you can add your own original content or other people's content. I recommend your own content, of course, because you want to promote your own stuff. Yes. And other people can also add things, like if it's landscape photography, would you get other photographers adding to your collection, or is it only with you that you can? No, uh, and that wasn't exactly the question, but that's a good question. Only I can add to this collection. I can, however, see someone else's picture and add it to the collection. Someone else can't add to my collection, only myself. So only you can add to the collection. And should it always be visual? I mean, there might be a collection of articles you want to share. Studies show that visual content often gets better reactions rather than text. So a little picture, a simple picture to explain what the article is and then the article. So only you can add to the collection. Um, you're like broadcasting something to several people that are interested in the topic. Are you going to talk about how people add your stuff to their collection? Or you mm -hmm. add their stuff to your collection? I'm going to talk about how to add stuff to the, our collection right now, yes. I can't talk about how someone else adds it to their collection because you have to have good stuff to entice them to add it to your collection. But we have different ways. Once you create a collection, you will see a little pencil on the bottom right corner. Or, if I'm back on my home screen, and I'm going to share something brand new here, do I want to share it publicly, or do I want to share it to a collection? Funny Animal Picks collection. See the icon there. So. I can do it from the home screen. I can, wherever I see the pencil there, I need to set it to the appropriate collection. If I'm looking at my collections, if I've clicked on my collection, there's a pencil there, and whatever I'm adding here will automatically go to this collection. I suppose from here, in a collection, I can choose to put it public, but then that defeats the purpose. You know, there would be a purpose, but I believe Google has changed it. You used to be able to target content to multiple channels or multiple avenues. I think they've changed it down just to one because it probably got abused. I was saying, share this to the cat people and the bird people and the funny animals and this and this and that, and that gets like spam. So from what I'm seeing here, it only seems to let us, with the modern Google+, Plus, only select one thing at a time. So what I can share is just the same as the other screen. Text, links, pictures, polls, videos, etc. But then I've just created a collection. I've created like a group to organize what this is. Yes? Can you share, share like one picture? multiple collections? One picture to multiple. I don't believe so. I can try that right now. Find an appropriate graphic. If I've got a funny cat, if I've got a funny picture, then I've got to share a funny cat picture. So I'm in my collection. I'm about to add a photo. Notice up here, I can only select the one collection. If I try to select a different collection, 
it will only let me select that one. See, it switched to more stuff. Only one at a time. I can do that. What I could do if I really want to share it to more than one collection is share it again and this time choose the other collection. Then you're going to have lots of cat pictures at once and that might be weird. So here I'm going to share the same picture but I'm putting it over to more stuff. If a person comes over to my profile, they're going to see the more stuff collection, the funny animal pics, and then as, if they scroll down, they're going to see, oh, he really likes cats, <laughs> which I do, so that's okay. But they're going to see the same thing, and that's looking a little spammy. Why are you showing the same thing over and over to all of these different avenues? Some of these things are conscious, some of these things are subconscious. You might not think that at all. Some people will err on the side of caution, which is post original content, don't over post the same thing over and over. Yes, you have your goal of five things, but don't share the same five cat pictures five different times. Is that original since you found on the web or not really original? Ninety-nine percent of the time it's not original. Doing this search here, I don't know whose it is, I just borrowed it. It probably wasn't okay to borrow it. I'm just showing for educational purposes. So I would take up my own photo and use my own content. Because they can find you and say, down. They could, yeah. Worst case scenario, they whoever shot it originally asks you to take it down. Actually, worse, worst case scenario is they ask you to take it down and they want to find you. So you might as well use original content. Is there any possibility of converting a Pinterest board to a collection on Google Plus? No, they're rival networks. So Google thinks their version is better, Pinterest thinks their version is better, Facebook thinks its version is better. So to my knowledge, there's no easy way to do that. There might be some software out there that might do it for free or not. I don't know. And yeah, if you've already built a collection and a following on Pinterest, it would be great to bring it over on Google+. But as I've said previously, each network has its own sort of character, its own followers, its own people inside of it, and they're in Google Plus for a reason, because I don't want to be on Facebook, because I don't want to be on Pinterest. So if you're kind of bringing the same content through every network, you might not get the most, the best out of it. So create collections to entice people to follow the collection and your stuff. Only you can add to the collection. Um, 80-20 rule. I don't believe I said it last week, but it also applies for last week. Try to follow 80-20 rule, which is, this applies not just to collections, but anything you, anything you share, which is 80% original content, 20% repurposed, Repurposed. I need spell check. Repurposed content. That's just a way of saying someone else's content. I did that search. I found a picture. I shared that. It might not have been the best because it might have been copyrighted. What I could do is if someone is posting something on Google+, most likely they want people to see it and share it. So I can share someone else's post on Google+, Plus, just like I can retweet on Twitter. If someone tweeted that on Twitter, publicly especially, most likely they want people to see it, so I'm going to retweet it on Twitter. If they shared it publicly on Facebook, most likely I want to reshare it. Same thing on Pinterest, Google+, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of these. Most likely, it, if they deactivated the way to share it, then probably I shouldn't share it. Yes? I also have seen the 80-20 rule described as 80% helpful comment, uh, helpful posts, and 20% sales. Or oh sure. Marketing. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way to bring it up as well. Um, we can have also here 80%, uh, you know, helpful, fun types of posts, and then 20% sales. You can, of course, change that however you want. It's going to depend on your audience. But if you're doing a lot of posts about, look at my new product, buy this, 
here's our coupon, here's a sale, etc. You might turn off your followers. It's too much salesmanship. I just want to look at cat pictures. Well, if you put some cat pictures related to your product to entice them, and then when you put in the, the ad once in a while, it won't be so bad instead of lots of ads. Sales types, sales type posts. There's also another one about 80% of your business comes from 20% of the effort. Or do I have that backwards? 20% of the business comes from 80% of the effort? One of those two. But it's, uh, again, it's uh, effort and content. And this won't apply exactly to everyone. Let's take one more break. Think about maybe collections. We'll take a break, then we'll talk about communities, which I think are even better than collections. Quick question? I'll be there one moment. We'll take a break, 8.30 to 8.40, and then we'll look at communities.